Welcome to Press This, the WordPress community podcast featuring exclusive content and interviews with leaders in the WordPress community, covering everything from development to integrating your digital marketing strategy with WordPress. Join host David Vogelpohl of WP Engine and special guests from across the community as they keep you up to speed on the latest advancements in WordPress. Let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. This is your host, David Vogelpohl. I support the WordPress community through my role at WP Engine, and I love to bring the best of the community to you here every week on Press This. As a reminder, you can follow me on Twitter at WPDavidV, and of course, you can subscribe to Press This on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or download the latest episodes at WMR.FM. In this episode, we're going to be talking about what's up with Brian Gardner and the future of WordPress, and of course, featuring for that interview and that discussion, actually Brian Gardner. Brian, welcome to, back to Press This. Yeah, I was going to say, second time around. Thanks for, for having me. Of course, different context this time, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think the last one was right around 2018, right? Shortly after the acquisition of Studio Press by WP Engine. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, we're going to cover some of that here today for those listening. Um, for those unfamiliar, uh, Brian uh, gained some fame in the WordPress community through uh, kind of co-creating the Genesis framework. Um, he now leads uh, WordPress developer relations at WP Engine. Um, and we're going to have him uh, or have him here really to talk about his journey following the acquisition. What's he been up to from 2018 through today? Um, what he has planned for the future? And of course, his thoughts about the future of WordPress in general. So Brian, really excited to have you here to kind of talk through these things. Now, when I had you last on, I actually didn't listen to the, the, the 2018 episode uh, uh, before this. I kind of forgot the answer, I guess, but uh, maybe you could answer the same question I ask all my guests. Could you briefly tell me uh, your WordPress origin story? When was the first time you used WordPress? I got to say it was 2006. Um, that was when I was introduced to WordPress by a, a guy named Brad, who I just randomly met on the internet. Uh, we were buddies in a forum and I was telling him I was on Google Blogspot, and he said, oh man, you got to check out this WordPress thing. It's a little bit better. You have more control over some things. And I was like, uh, okay, sure. Right. You know, I didn't know any better. So I, uh, rolled up my sleeves and I realized at the time, even then WordPress needed a little bit more, uh, finessing to my liking than Google's Blogspot platform was, but I, I found satisfaction in that, which of course was like the foundation to everything I've done since then. So. I like it. So 2006 is so shortly after the release of themes that themselves in WordPress core. Um, and, but just a year before you made revolution theme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty quick, pretty quick uh, deal. So revolution theme for those unfamiliar, I guess it was like the, the predecessor of the Genesis framework. And, and you released that in 2007, were you building website themes in other platforms prior to WordPress? Uh, no, no, no. WordPress was the first. I just, I, like I said, I got my hands dirty. I, I figured out some CSS, how to manipulate some things. Uh, started writing about it on my blog and just sharing. I just wanted a personal blog. I thought it was cool to be online because I had a, a regular job where I went to an office and estimated uh, science laboratory installations for the company that I worked for. And so uh, this was sort of a side, a side passion project. And uh, after sharing stuff that I've learned, people started asking about uh, whether or not I was hireable. And I was like, yeah, sure. I want to go on a vacation. So let's start the vacation fund and moon, moonlit a little bit on the side at night uh, and on the weekends. And of course, that led to the, the rejected design, which ultimately became the revolution theme. Interesting. You know, it's funny. I saw a thread on Twitter a couple of days ago where someone else was talking about, and in their case, like reusing some things they had built and kind of having that be part of uh, their, you know, a potential journey, I guess, for that being a product. Uh, I don't think the person had fully got there yet, but um, maybe you could kind of slow down on that part a little bit. And for those unfamiliar, um, can you can you share a little bit about your journey with Studio Press and Genesis? So you kind of started there with kind of the um, genesis of Genesis in a way, um, mm-hmm. but could you kind of connect the rest of that story from the the side project on the weekend to actually making a product, and then the company Studio Press, and, and tell us a little bit about how that went down. 
Sure. So uh, the project that I was talking about was a, a design for a real estate agent. He had seen stuff I had done, followed me on my blog, and I asked if I would do a custom design for him, which I did. And it was, uh, I, I wanted to push the envelope a little bit on what WordPress could do or what I thought it could do. So I, I did it in a way that was more than just sort of at the time, WordPress was like a blogging platform. And uh, I, I did it in a way that made it feel like an entire website with like a homepage and, and things like that. And so uh, what he was actually looking for uh, through miscommunication was just a real estate blog design. And so he rejected the first design I did for him. Uh, and then I went ahead and did a different design. And of course, you know, that, that went well, but uh, I was left with this design, which I thought was sort of, dare I say, revolutionary uh, in the space. And so I, I went to my blog and I said, would anybody be willing to buy a premium WordPress theme? And that arguably would have been the origin of that term. Uh, I don't know for sure, but uh, then I followed it up with, okay, because there was a resounding, I had a lot of people interested in what I was doing with WordPress. And so I had hundreds of comments saying, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I would buy it or something that looked like it or whatever. Uh, and so I followed that blog post up with, well, how much would you pay for one? Meaning a premium WordPress theme and of course, uh, range of answers. And so I, I went with 59 and put it on my blog for sale and it completely uh, transformed the trajectory of my path. Uh, it started selling a lot, making lots of money, which it went beyond vacation fund money. Uh, and it was doing really, really well for, gosh, I guess for up to a year or so. Uh, and then I got a cease and desist letter from a company in the United Kingdom who had claimed that revolution was uh, confusing in the marketplace. I, I took it to my intellectual property attorney. He said, probably best to rename. Uh, and so I chose the name Studio Press. And so Revolution themes, there was, I don't know, a handful of them maybe, uh, came over as the sort of the pilot group of uh, themes we sold on Studio Press. Uh, and after maybe like not even a year or so, year, year and a half, um, Nathan Rice, who is now uh, on board here and has been since the transition, uh, the acquisition there of Studio Press, I was asking him, I was like, hey, you know, like, because he was working with me at that time. And I was like, it seems like there's so much common code between all of these themes that every time we need to update a feature, I have to do it through all the themes. Is there a better way to build this to where we can kind of consolidate the core code base and then have more of a presentation layer or a design layer, uh, which is essentially uh, child themes as we know them now. And so, yeah, he, it's called a parent child theme thing. Uh, some people call it a framework and this is kind of how it works. And so we just sort of iterated uh, over several conversations and kind of talked through and he started building it and, um, Somewhere along the way, I picked the name Genesis, and that's what we've stuck with. I like it. So, you know, it's funny, um, you know, Jason Cohen, for those unfamiliars, the founder of WP Engine, the company that Brian and I, I both work at, actually. And Brian, I don't know if you know about this about his origin story with WP Engine, but he also started, he started with, a, I think it was a LinkedIn post. And he said, uh, who, would, who would pay $50 a month? I guess you landed at 59 one time, but his $50 a month for like premium managed WordPress hosting, which, you know, there's a couple of companies. I think there's like this, these circles where people debate like who invented what or who was first. Uh, but, but, you know, there were others, but like a lot of people had kind of said in Jason's post, like, oh yeah, that sounds great. I would totally pay for that. And uh, that was actually a very similar origin story there to you, Brian. Did you, were you aware of that origin story from Jason? I had think I think I had heard that I, I don't think I would have remembered it necessarily verbatim, but I, I heard something of that nature too. So yes, I was somewhat familiar with that story. That's funny. And you also mentioned how you kind of first got into it for vacation fund money. It reminds me of uh, some other prior guests that pressed this, Luke Carbis and Rob Stenson. Um, they call that kind of smaller WordPress product money. What is it? Uh, uh, oh, beer and gadget money. That's what that's that's how they referenced it. <laughs> Uh, so I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, agencies and freelancers. We've actually done quite a bit of episodes actually this year on this topic of, uh, you know, building a product within the context of your freelancer agency business. I also didn't realize that Nathan uh, in, in the kind of genesis of Genesis, if you would, was around that the common code and editing problem where you have lots of themes and you're having to kind of make the same structural changes in all of them all the time. Um, that makes a lot of sense, of course, thinking of it as the the root of a framework, but it, I, I thought it was maybe more purposeful, like we're going to go make a framework versus like you're trying to solve this kind of in the moment problem. Yeah, no, it, it was that. I, I remember 
pretty specifically, I was like, you know, I, I can't remember what function it was. I don't know if it's featured images or something with the header, something where I was like, I got to go do the same thing over like five different themes and update five different themes. And I maybe have even complaining to him. And he sort of said, well, what do you think of this sort of a thing? He and I had a, uh, and, and still have a great relationship, but he and I had a really interesting relationship in the early days where I would just sort of talk in the English of like how I needed it to be built or what, you know, it, was it possible? Uh, and so we had a lot of like sort of gibberish, like if, if this, can this happen else sort of conversations, which he would understand like what I was trying to get at. And he would say, yes, I can write that in code. I'm like, perfect. We need it to, to work this way. I like it. Nice uh, yin and yang there on the skill sets coming Very in. Very much that. so. I like that balance. Um, I want to unpack a little bit, though, of course, about what you've been up to since the acquisition, but we're going to take our first break and we'll be right back. Time to plug into a commercial break. Stay tuned for more Press This in just a moment. Here's the truth you need to know about podcasting. The biggest problem you face right now as a future podcaster is the myth that it takes an enormous amount of time or effort to produce a high-quality professional podcast. Luckily for you, there's a solution to your problem. If you're an online marketer who really needs to grow an audience of buyers but can't do all the heavy lifting alone, then here's the solution you're looking for. Introducing the DFY Podcasting System. Here's what you get. 30 minutes of one-on-one training a weekly podcast for you or your company, distribution to almost every podcast portal, an embeddable player for your website, an ebook called How to Podcast, created for WMR.FM show hosts, and much, much more. And best of all, you'll start seeing results with the DFY podcast system within a couple of weeks. You're just one podcast away from growing brand awareness and engagement in your business. Log on to podcast.wmr.fm and sign up for a deeply discounted rate today. That's podcast.wmr.fm. Let's press forward with more Press This, only on webmasterradio.fm. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. This is your host, David Vogelpohl. I'm interviewing Brian Gardner of Genesis fame about what he's been up to since the acquisition of Studio Press, but also what he has planned for the future. Uh, Brian, right before the break, you were talking, uh, giving a lot of really interesting details on kind of the early days of, of Genesis and in your theme business. Uh, I thought it was really interesting to hear how it was more of a matter of solving an immediate problem than like, I'm going to make a framework. Um, that was actually a little bit of a surprise to me. And I thought I knew quite a bit about this stuff. So that was very interesting. Um, but you know, the acquisition of Studio Press happened back in 2018. This was, as you recall, um, right before the release of Gutenberg. And so like WordPress is drastically changing, your life and business are drastically changing. So, so talk to us, what have you been up to since the acquisition back in 2018? Yeah, those two things weren't necessarily um, unrelated. I, I saw, we as a team actually saw Gutenberg coming and as a theme company, um, we weren't sure if we were able to sort of dedicate the resources that I thought I had recommended that it was going to take to really embrace all of this. Of course, we didn't realize it was going to take three, four years to, to slowly evolve. But uh, And so that was one of the reasons why we chose to sell because we, uh, as partners, were just fried. Uh, we were 10 years sort of in that run. And you know some of us were interested in just trying other things and doing other things. And so that was sort of the other part of it. Uh, and it's funny because, it, you know, ignorance is bliss and we all have journeys. And so it's easy for me to say, like within the last few weeks since I've joined, I should have just come over then. But I feel like there was, you know, an element of like, I needed to walk what I've called since then the proverbial wilderness. I needed some time sort of out of what I had been doing for 12 years straight, right? I think it was a season I just, I, I needed to just kind of figure out what I wanted to do and try different things, you know, in WordPress, out of WordPress and you know, just kind of step away just a bit, right? Like I was never ever gone, but I just felt like I needed some space because I was so in the trenches for so long that I was, I just needed some time. Uh, and so, you know, I tried, I've done several things since, since the acquisition. Um, uh, Rafal, who was uh, the designer at Studio Press and I, along with two others, uh, three others actually, uh, started an agency and, and I realized sort of quickly through that, like agency life isn't for me in the context in which it was going. Uh, and that was okay. But so, so we did several really great projects and I was able to do some design, which was fun. 
Uh, and so then after that, I kind of did a little bit of just on my own freelance design, picking up projects here and there, people who would just reach out. I wasn't ever really going to market with any of it uh, again, because I just I kind of just wanted some breathing space. Uh, and then let's see, I guess early this year, well, late last year, started coming up with this idea for real estate um, and sort of doing a platform for real estate agents. But uh, with the pandemic, it was a terrible time to have figured that out because the, uh, the industry flipped upside down and real estate agents were super busy and none of them thought they needed a digital presence. And so like, it just, it was a mismatch in, in timing. And so uh, I guess over the summer is when I finally realized that I needed to kind of figure out what my go forward plan was. Cause you know, at some point got to have a go forward plan. And uh, I had come across some, some content written uh, by Justin Tadlock over on WP Tavern uh, relative to WordPress and block patterns and Gutenberg and kind of the editor and all of that. And things just really started to make sense. And it crystallized in my head. And I was like, oh, now I get where this is all coming to, right? Like I didn't understand it maybe three years ago, or I didn't believe that it was going to kind of become a thing that I would want to play with, but it did. And I very quickly started formulating the idea of, of the product called Frost, which is sort of, you know, uh, my second coming, I guess, in a sense, but uh, you know, a lot of, lot of things just in general around WordPress that uh, have excited me. And uh, as you know, as I reached out to you and Heather and sort of wanted to figure out the best way back in, uh, I was presented the opportunity that I have now, which is uh, leading developer relations uh, WordPress for WP Engine and uh, could not be any happier with where I'm at. Well, we're certainly glad to have you here, uh, Brian, and and certainly someone from the the, the big big leagues on uh, helping people, you know, master and expand their skills at building WordPress sites. Um, I know you've been doing that since uh, I guess two thousand seven. I learned or two thousand six. I learned mm -hmm. today. Um, now you mentioned um, earlier as you were kind of describing all that, you, you kind of initially started with saying, well the desire to kind of sell studio press for you and um, Gutenberg, you know, in a way weren't disconnected. And, and then later in your description, you talked about reading the article from Justin and I love Justin's articles on Tavern. They're really well done. And, and you say it kind of clicks for you that, that at that moment. And I want to talk to you about Frost in a second, but um, the, the, the Delta between that in your head, like 2018, Brian, and then the Brian that read Justin's article, like what was the parts that were missing between those two parts that you, that clicked for you, that you quote got, you know, it was, it was time away. It was, I needed to sort of clear my head from it all. I was like, I needed to prove to myself or I thought I needed to prove to myself that I was, I was good outside of just WordPress or a theme or design stuff. It's like, well, I got to do something different to, to prove to, to myself and to the world. And so that's why I set out on that journey and why at the time I chose not to come on to WP Engine because it had nothing to do with company culture. I wanted to be a part of the team, but I also thought in the same breath, I'm like, well, I need to prove something here. So I need to just start over and try something out again. Uh, and so there was just a lot of like, tried this, well, that didn't work out. So there was a lot of missteps there. And, you know, uh, for the most part, I, I went through relatively unscathed, I think, um, you know, I wear my emotions and, and what I do and what I go through on my sleeve. For those who follow me on Twitter, you know that. So you probably could see sort of the peaks and valleys of what it was like sort of post acquisition. Um, but it just came down to the fact where I was like, you know, when I came across those posts from Justin, I was like, I, I now see the big picture and I have never stopped loving WordPress and I love design. And it's the number one thing. I think we even talked about this before, you know, like if I could do one thing and only one thing for the rest of my life, design would be it. And I've never, ever loved community more than I do now, but even through all of the acquisition and, and, you know, having to sort of foster that transition, like, so like when I saw Justin's thing, I was like, you know, I was ready. I was ready to sort of start to kind of come back and do what felt familiar. I felt like I proved to myself, at least that I tried, I didn't necessarily succeed in what I set out to do, but that's okay. Cause I'm, I'm a guy of the journey. I love journeys and things happen all for reasons. And, you know, here we are. Yeah, no doubt. So it sounds like it was less around, like you didn't quote, get the tech. It just was that you had all this other kind of, uh, um, I guess, objectives or like challenges for yourself or open questions. And it was more around your journey than the uh, particulars about the tech. Um, yeah. And that makes sense. Okay. Now you mentioned you created a, a theme called the frost theme, and this is a Genesis framework theme, correct? Uh, that is correct. 
Okay. And uh, tell me about the use of blocks in it. Like I played with it, but I'm just curious, like from the audience's perspective, like how have you been thinking about the role of blocks as you think about Frost? So blocks by themselves are powerful, but when what Justin did was he helped me see sort of the presentation layer of patterns, which is becoming a really big uh, word thrown around. And I think really is, as he even wrote about in the tavern, that patterns are the future of WordPress, building WordPress websites. And I've always been a visual guy and idea guy. And so like blocks by themselves were great. But like, when I think of the fact that I could easily have provided a, a, the, um, a system for someone to like build a, a WordPress website, literally in seconds, like that's what excited me. The challenge of, could I actually pull off what I thought to be true, which was sort of seeing something like in Figma or wireframe form and do it in a way that would, that WordPress could actually accommodate. And uh, it didn't take long for me to realize that what I thought to be true was was capable of being done. And so um, so I set, set out and built Frost. That's really cool. I think one of the trends I've seen people talking about recently is how people are using the block editor. And as I think about like the history of studio press and Genesis with premium child themes and this notion that the products kind of fill two roles. One, providing an access to building sites, custom sites for people that aren't developers, but also enabling developers to work faster. And it sounds like that's thematically part of maybe what you're discovering on your journey. Is that true? Or or do you think it's one or the other? No, I, 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 I think it's true. I think, um, I'm really excited. I don't think I've ever been as excited about, I think I even tweeted this last week or the week before, how excited I am about WordPress again and, and having been in it for 15 years. And, you know, Matt always would say the road ahead of WordPress is a lot longer than the road behind it. And, you know, yeah, it's easy to be like, oh yeah, that's so fun and easy to say. But like, I, I believed it every time I heard it, like, cause I always feel that way. I always feel like there's, there's more to be done and there's more, more paths to be formed and, and all of that. And so I, I'm really excited about the role here and being able to sort of lead that charge on behalf of WP Engine. I feel like- That's a, This is a great segue, Brian. Did I have a question for you about this actually, but we're going to take our last break and we'll be right back. Time to plug into a commercial break. Stay tuned for more Press This in just a moment. Are you looking for the best in WordPress speed, security, and scalability? WP Engine is a digital experience platform for WordPress, powering digital experiences for large brands around the world. With easy-to-use site management tools and powerful do-it-your-way development features, WP Engine gives you the flexibility to build it your way. Improve your SEO and conversion rates with a faster site on WP Engine. Learn more on WPEngine.com. Let's press forward with more Press This, only on webmasterradio.fm. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. This is your host, David Vogelpohl. I'm interviewing Brian Gardner about what's been up with Brian Gardner, a very convenient topic for Brian to talk to. Um, Brian, right before the break, you you transitioned as perfect into my next uh, set of questions, Uh, but you have a new role at WP Engine um, leading WordPress developer relations. And can you tell me about that role and maybe some examples of the things that you'll be working on or are working on or excited about? Yes. So uh, officially, I am principal developer advocate. That is my title. And essentially what I'm here to do is uh, lead WordPress developer relations, helping uh, the community, reaching out to customers, people who use our products, people who don't, and just generally helping folks through the transition to the block editor and full site editing sort of via the Gutenberg experience. I feel like Um, even though it's only been, this is my sixth week, which is both hard to believe. And also it feels like so much longer, uh, everything I've learned and sort of the strategies I formulated as I embrace this role have really led me to the point where like, we have, I personally, we, as a company, um, and even as a community, there's, there's, there's so much opportunity to sort of set precedents and and leverage the resources we have and produce content and teach and demonstrate the capabilities of where WordPress is going. And I feel like I just want to, you know, formulate the developer relations team here to become a treasure chest of knowledge and and sort of operate as a conduit between the product, the project and its users. That's fantastic. Sounds really fun. Now, you have been up to some things. I know you've had some things planned with Torque recently and like a contributor day. Can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Uh, yes, that is this coming, what, Friday and Saturday? Uh, It'd be where... last Friday and Saturday when we broadcast this, but yes. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, yeah. The, the wonder of time travel here. So yeah, last Friday and Saturday, we had a tour yeah. contributor day. In, in, my past, <laughs> yeah. in my past, I would have contributed at least two hours of code. Uh, so one of the things that we want to do is really embrace open source, the open source ideology and just pay things forward and, and be generous with our time. Uh, and so we as a company are organizing, have organized an event uh, to encourage people to, you know, take two hours out of their week or their month or whatever, and help sort of pay it forward and contribute to WordPress. Uh, that can look at several different ways and, and even beyond just that event, right? There's always uh, opportunities, uh, whether it's on learn or make. To, to, to make a difference, whether you're a designer, a developer, a user, there's always some element of um, paying things forward that we can help accommodate for. Yeah, I loved watching the email and Slack threads develop as y'all were planning that event and seeing the guidance and feedback from folks like Courtney Robertson and Josepha Hayden. And uh, I thought it was really great. Um, and then, of course, just around uh, WP Engine and Torque, uh, all the various people kind of jumping in to organize and get that event off the ground. It, it was really exciting to see and, and the levels of input to help uh, make it a great event. So thanks for sharing, Brian. That was cool. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So um, in, the, in the last couple of minutes here, you know, I'd seen, you know, you kind of built your first FSC theme um, and you kind of talked a lot about being excited about the future of WordPress. Um, what do you think is to come? Like, what, what are you excited about? Uh, well, for starters, WordPress 5.9. Uh, I've always been uh, a core person, somebody who always likes to build for core rather than things that extend it just because it's so easy to just uh, know that everything's already been tested and, and relatively fully baked and stuff like that. So the first step is uh, WordPress 5.9 that I'm looking forward to. That, as from what I understand, will include most of what the original full site editing scope will be. And so I know that there's probably what, six or seven weeks left before uh, sort of feature freeze and all of that. And I know um, there's a lot of exciting things coming because I've been probably as close to the leading edge as I've ever been with WordPress. And so like I can see it and I'm working within the Gutenberg plugin to do things like full site editing themes and really understand the power of theme.json and stuff like that. So there's a lot of really good things coming. I think there's a lot of opportunities for missteps also. I think there's there needs to be like really clear paths paved here. Uh, and I hope to be a part of that on behalf of WP Engine and just because I want to see WordPress be the best it can be. Yeah, it's great to see that kind of give back mission there as well. And, you know, I think that's a really good kind of point to end on is that we're still in the throes of FSE and, and what will become and what will become of WordPress and what will become of the products that work within it. And um, it's great to hear that folks like you are, are sitting there fiddling with all the new stuff to, to help folks uh, with that journey. And, and certainly um, also through the, not just the product sense, but also the using sense. So super cool. Thanks for do, joining us today, Brian. Yeah, thanks for having me. And of course, I'll happy to be on as often as you want. Totally. We'll absolutely have you back. If you'd like to learn more about what Brian is up to, you can visit WPEngine.com. Thanks everyone for listening to Press This, the WordPress community podcast on WMR. Again, this is your host, David Vogelpohl. I support the WordPress community through my role at WP Engine, and I love to bring the best of the community to you here every week on Press This. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of WebmasterRadio.fm's management or sponsors. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of WebmasterRadio.fm is prohibited.